Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, fellow veterans. My name is Joe Frazier, retired United States Air Force Command Chief Master Sergeant, and presently serving as a Director of Campus Safety, Security, and Emergency Management here at Hodges University. I'm also a proud Hodges University alumnus and former chairman of the Hodges University American Military Veterans Education Fund Cabinet. The goal of this cabinet is to raise funds to help supplement educational opportunities for all veterans. I'm humbled and I'm honored to be your narrator for this evening's ceremony, an event designed to pay tribute to all veterans and acknowledge the many sacrifices and accomplishments put forth that enabled our country to remain strong and vigilant. We also want to thank each and every one of you for defending the rights, liberties, and freedoms of all Americans. Now, as you enter the room this evening, your attention may have been drawn the American flag that is reverently framed and hung in the back of the room. Closer inspection would reveal the names of the gallant law enforcement officers, firefighters, paramedics, <coughs> and brave civilians that in essence was our first line of defense on the war of terrorism that began on September 11, 2001. The battle continues to this day as our brave Marines, soldiers, sailors, and airmen remain ever vigilant in Iraq and Afghanistan. At this time, I would ask you all to stand for our Pledge of Allegiance and our National Anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, speaker for today's ceremony, Lieutenant General Arthur Williams, U.S. Army retired, who proudly served our country for 36 years. General Williams was born and raised in Watertown, New York, and was commissioned as an Army officer upon his graduation in 1960 from St. Lawrence University. His education achievements include a Bachelor's of Science degree in Civil Engineering from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and a master's degree in civil engineering and economic planning from Stanford University. He is a graduate of the U.S. Naval War College and has earned an honorary doctorate of engineering from Rensselaer Polytechnic University. He has commanded engineer troops in Germany, South Vietnam, and South Korea. He had numerous assignments in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to include division commander of the Pacific Ocean Division, and division commander of the Mississippi River Commission. 
In 1990, President Bush appointed General Williams to be president of the Mississippi River Commission. In 1992, President Bush nominated and the U.S. Senate appointed General Williams to be Chief of Engineers and Commanding General of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the world's largest public engineering, design, and construction management organization. General Williams retired in June of 1996. Please welcome Lieutenant General Arthur Williams. Chief Frazier, thank you for that introduction, and I want to say thanks to whoever decided to invite me here to the ceremony. I'm very honored. I think it's uh, probably John, my friend back there, that had something to do with it. But anyways, I'm really honored to be here with you all today. And uh, after listening to that wonderful edition of, this, of our national anthem, I must say that every time I hear the national anthem, I get a little bit misty-eyed and a little bit emotional. And I hope I never get too old to lose those feelings. I also want to thank the faculty and the staff and the students of Hodge University for taking the time to recognize our veterans by this special tribute that you put together. As you all know, in the hectic pace that we all lead in today's society, we sometimes lose track of the important things. And we take for granted things. And we tend to forget the people, the events that led us to where we are today. And some of those events and some of those people obviously helped mold who we are and mold the society that we all enjoy today. And as I look here over the audience, I'm a little bit curious, and uh, we'll play a little game here for a second to the show of hands. How many people in this audience, raise your hand, are veterans? Just look around. people in the audience have or had a veteran in your family? Raise your hand. Look at that. All right. I want to thank all those veterans that were in your families or are in your families for the service and the sacrifices that they made during their lifetime. Uh, for those of you that uh, may not be familiar with the history of Veterans Day, let me very briefly uh, go over a few pieces of historical information. Although World War I officially ended when the Treaty of Versailles was signed on June 28th of 1919, the fighting actually ceased about seven months prior to that when they declared an armistice between the Allied nations and Germany. And that armistice started on the 11th hour of November 11th of 1918. In November of 1919, President Wilson proclaimed November 11th as Armistice Day in the United States. And in those days, they celebrated Armistice Day with a series of parades, and they stopped businesses temporarily uh, starting at 11 o'clock in the morning. And as the years went on, 27 states uh, declared November 11th as legal holidays in their respective states. And uh, they called it Armistice Day also. At that time, Armistice Day was primarily a day set aside to honor veterans of World War I. But when the, on June 1st of 1954, after World War II and after the Korean War, Congress, probably Congressman Mack helped in that way before your time, sir. <laughs> Anyways, Congress, at the urging, urging of veteran service organizations, passed an act in 1938 struck out the word armistice, and in its place, they inserted veterans. So November 11th became a day to honor American veterans for all wars. And so we're gathered here today to honor Americans' veterans for their patriotism, for their love of country, and their willingness to stand up and to serve and to sacrifice for their country. So in closing, I have a challenge for all of you that are here today. And that challenge is a very simple one, but a very important one. I want you to help me help ensure that our future generations know about veterans. 
They should know who they were, what they did, and why they did it. May God bless our veterans, past, present, and future. And again, thank you very much for allowing me this opportunity to join you today. I'm very honored. On behalf of all veterans here today, I want to thank you, General Williams, for supporting our endeavors and for helping us to honor these brave men and women. This time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Terry McMahon, President of Hodges University. Thank you, Joe, and thank you, General. Uh, I've had the pleasure of uh, working with uh, General Dozier and General Cohen in our area, so. The Generals in our area is a very special club that you guys head up, and although it's quite small, I think it. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here with you, and I should note to all of you that uh, we are streaming live at our Naples campus, and uh, we have some veterans uh, at that campus uh, watching this event. And let me uh, pass along a very uh, special note of thanks to uh, our, our founders, or not our founders, but our namesakes. Uh, Earl Hodges, who's a veteran, and his wife, Thelma Hodges. Thank you guys for being here, and I'm sure you're enjoying this event. Uh, it's my pleasure at this time to uh, uh, welcome to the podium another great American, uh, U.S. Representative for Florida's 14th Congressional District, Connie Mack. And uh, I'd like to thank you, Congressman Mack, for securing the flag, for which we'll be presenting a little bit later, and invite you to the podium to make some comments to our very brief. Uh, General, uh, I, I appreciated your remarks and I think uh, the challenge that you set forth uh, for us all to remember uh, our veterans, uh, past, present, and future, is a noble one. And uh, thank you for your service and thank you to all of uh, the veterans who are here today who are watching uh, for your service. You know, growing up as a kid, I sat around a table listening to my mother and father talk about freedom. Uh, and without the veterans, uh, I would not be able to enjoy the freedoms that I do. Uh, and neither would your children and grandchildren. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank all of the veterans for what they've done for our country and for our freedoms. And as my dad has always told me, and that I believe in the core of who I am, that freedom is the core of all human progress. And the fight for freedom uh, is important for all of us. So thank you all very much. I want to thank Hodges as well. Um, I know you have a great program that uh, helps veterans uh, get an education. Uh, and I think that's a noble uh, challenge, a, a noble uh, endeavor. And so I thank uh, Hodges for uh, your commitment to our veterans and our community and helping them with an education. Thank you so much. And God bless you and God bless America. And uh, John Edling, let me uh, thank you also for helping to uh, orchestrate this event. Uh, another one of our great alums, and uh, proud to have you here today, and another great veteran. Uh, veteran. For, for more than two centuries, veterans have successfully defended this land of the free. Regardless of the location or the threat, men and women of the United States military have courageously gone into battle risking their own pursuit of life and liberty so that you and I can enjoy those same pursuits today. Some of those brave soldiers have offered the ultimate sacrifice so that the red, white, and blue colors represented in our flag may continue to fly unwavering from the slightest breeze to the strongest of gales. From the generations of veterans that have secured our country in conflicts past to the troops currently in harm's way on the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan, the sacrifices of these heroes are recorded in the very heart of Lady Liberty. And today, we, as a country, honor their service and offer a grateful and most humble thank you. Here at Hodges, we have a great respect for our many veteran students and are honored that they selected our institution in order to pursue their educational goals. 
We have made every effort to ensure that they find a welcoming atmosphere, a caring staff and faculty that understands their unique needs as they transition from military to civilian life. I'd like to introduce you to one such student and ask her to join me on the podium. Staff Sergeant Chantel Cortez, who will be making the presentation of the flag. Chantel served in the Marines for four years. However, due to injury, she was ineligible for re-enlistment. She is married to Dan Cortez, a fellow Marine, who hopes to become an officer for the service. Chantel has one son, Mackenzie, and says that serving the Marines was one of the most fulfilling experiences of her life, rivaled only by being a mother. Currently, Chantel is studying for her Bachelor of Science in Health Studies here at Hodges and has plans to go for her Master's in Physicians Assistance. Staff Sergeant Cortez, on behalf of the Hodges University family, as well as those gathered here today, thank you for your service to our country. President McMahon, Congressman Mack, and special thanks to you, Staff Sergeant Cortez. At this time, and with your indulgence, I would like to share with you my thoughts on Veterans Day and this great nation of ours. When I was younger, my friends and I took our freedoms, our liberties, our citizenship, and our patriotism for granted. I didn't realize how precious those commodities were until the summer of 1970, and I received notification that one of my dearest friends, Tom Marino, was killed in Vietnam during the Battle of Song Bay. I attended my friend's funeral a couple of weeks later, and I still recall the vivid memory of the honor guard detail leader presenting the folded flag to Tom's mother. Transfer of that flag was my first discovery of just how much the price of freedom costs. From that point on, the American flag has forever been a symbol of freedom for me, and I would imagine for millions of other Americans throughout America's existence. I've also had the honor and pleasure of interviewing 25 out of 164 World War II veterans from Collier County for the Collier County Capturing Living History website, and every one of them indicated that our American flag was their source of inspiration in carrying out their mission to keep America free from tyranny and oppression. Early on in my 26 years in the United States Air Force, I had the opportunity of serving with many Korean and Vietnam War veterans. And I learned through their teachings that the American flag gave us all the clarity and bravery to do what we had to do. The American flag has always been a symbol of our nation's unity and a source of pride and inspiration both at home and abroad. Every veteran here today can look at the symbol of freedom and remember the legacy that they contributed to and be proud that they had a small part in upholding our nation's founding principles. That we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. At this time, I'd like to share with you a rendition of Old Glory as written by Howard Snobber, World War II veteran. And may I direct your attention to the screen to witness the Cape Coral High School Honor Guard and Color Guard as they lower our flag and graciously and honorably fold our great symbol of freedom. Old Glory. I am the flag of the United States of America. My name is Old Glory. I fly atop the world's tallest buildings. I stand watch in America's halls of justice. I fly majestically over great institutions of learning. I stand guard with the greatest military power in the world. Look up and see. I stand for peace, honor, truth, and justice. I stand for freedom. I am confident. I am arrogant. I am proud. When I am flown with my fellow banners, my head is a little higher. 
my colors a little true. I bow to them. I am recognized all over the world. I am worshipped. I am saluted. I am respected. I am revered. I am loved. And I am feared. I have fought every battle of every war for more than 200 years. Gettysburg, Shiloh, Appomattox, San Juan Hill, the trenches of France, the Argonne Forest, Anzio, Rome, the beaches of Normandy, Guadalcanal, the deserts of Africa, the cane fields of the Philippines, the rice paddies and jungles of Guam, Okinawa, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Kuwait, Afghanistan, Iraq, and a score of places long forgotten by all but those who were with me. I was there. I led soldiers. I followed them. I watched over them. They loved me. I was on a small hill on Iwo Jima. I was dirty, battle-worn, and tired. But my soldiers cheered me, and I was proud. I had been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries that I had helped set free. It does not hurt, for I am invincible. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of my own country. And when it is by those with whom I have served in battle, it hurts. But I shall overcome, for I am strong. I have slipped the bonds of earth and stand watch over the uncharted new frontiers of space from my vantage point on the moon. I have been a solemn witness to all of America's finest hours. But my finest hour comes when I am torn into strips to be used for bandages for my wounded comrades on the field of battle. When I fly at half mast to honor my soldiers. And when I lie in the trembling arms of a grieving mother at the graveside of her fallen son. I'm proud. My name is Old Glory. Dear God, long may I wait. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time I am honored to introduce the founding dean of Johnson School of Business and a Marine veteran. Dr. Fred Jerome will make a very special presentation. Let me recompose myself after that. Good afternoon, everyone. I've already been introduced, you know, I'm the Dean of the Johnson School of Business, and uh, sometimes I'm also referred to as a Dean and a Marine. Uh, somehow, I guess I'm still in denial, uh, never accepting the fact that I was honorably discharged in the 1960s. You know what they say about the Marines. It uh, is my honor to participate in this important event that recognizes our Armed Forces veterans for all the sacrifices they have made to keep this country free and our lives safe. All of you who are attending today already recognize the importance of their sacrifices. And I'm pleased that you and I and millions of Americans share the significance of this day. As most of you know, Hodges University has a history of taking a special interest in veterans. And it's reflected in the dedication of our resources and the resources of our supporters to help veterans find a welcome home with us so that they can prepare for a better life after serving our country. Our dedication to veteran students starts at the top with our president, who guides our actions to make sure that no veteran is left behind in pursuit of Hodges University education. Thank you, Dr. McMahon, for that. Each year, a distinguished veteran is selected to represent all veterans, past and present. And this year, our distinguished veteran is being posthumously recognized as she passed away last year. Private First Class Ruth Solomonson Hughes is this year's honoree, and she is the mother of our own Dr. Nancy Wyatt. On behalf of her mother, Nancy will receive the ceremonial flag 
and it's flown over our nation's capital from Congressman Connie Mack, who was kind enough to deliver it to us today. Before we move on, you need to know a little story about PFC Ruth Solomonson Hughes involving her motivation to join the Army, if I may. Is it okay? Uh, Ruth was working in a war factory at the beginning of World War II and digging the general foreman. Uh, we all know that that practice would be unacceptable in the military as it would be termed from undue familiarization. But it's okay in a civilian factory. Her foreman decided he would enlist in the Army, and Ruth said, if you go, I'm going to. Hence, they both went down to the recruiting office to enlist, and Ruth was promptly sworn in and moved on to basic training. As luck would have it, her new fiance's job was deemed critical to the war effort, and he was turned away and went back to work in the factory while she went to work. Undeterred by her change in circumstances, Ruth served until the end of the war, at which time they were married. Just as those who preceded her in this honor, notably Dr. Peter Thomas and Harold Rose, PFC Solomonson Hughes served an interesting, important, and honorable enlistment. She was one of the first women to serve in the Army Air Corps and among the first to serve as a military police officer. She was injured in her law enforcement duties and transferred from the MPs to serve in support positions for the experimental flight line at Wright-Patterson Air Base, which was pretty confidential and secret at that time, and was also later identified as the base that conducted intelligence work on uh, captured enemy aircraft, uh, developing the first jet engines, and actually getting us into guided missiles. Quite a remarkable military record for a woman of the 1940s when women were adopting new roles in gender equality while the men were serving, as the song goes, over there. At this time, please rise as our colors are delivered to the stage for a presentation to Dr. Wyatt. Gave me as she moved into my home 
was to call someone and have a flagpole erected so that we could fly the American flag each and every day. We do that to this day, and in honor of her, we also fly the Army flag. This is a huge honor for our family. And I can only thank Hodges University, Congressman Mack, General, and everyone who had a part in this. And if she were here, she would want to give a nudge to John Ebling, because uh, as she grew older, she received some services from the VA, and John Ebling was her service officer. I was also his teacher as he earned his bachelor's degree. <laughs> so I can give you a good elbow for that too, John. I'd like to say thank you once again. This is such an honor for my mother. I know she's here with us today, and it means a lot to our family. Thank you so very much. Please remain standing for the playing of taps. Please be seated. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to offer one last thought. Our task is to know our history and know why we are here and what it has taken and will take to keep this nation free. So today we remember those who believed in this great nation and risked it all so that we could choose to say or do most anything we please and allow men and women to become the best that each can be. Thank you to veterans past. Thank you to our men and women in uniform today. God bless each and every one of you and God bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time we would like to invite you all to take a tour of our university and enjoy some life. Thank you all for your honor that you're here.